Hi everyone, this is Danny Morris. Uh, sorry, I sound a little sick today. Um, but I wanted to talk about Google Calendar as um, our assignment for Module 7. Uh, Google Calendar is something that I've used for a while. It's something that I've used through my courses at Fort Hayes, through my undergrad, as well as even in my high school experience. Um, I haven't actually used it for work because we use Outlook, and that's the two that I would like to compare today. After taking some of these courses and the fundamental training, I found some of the features of Google Calendar. Google Calendar helps you stay organized. You can create multiple calendars, share docs within events, send events to multiple users, attach links within events, organize and color coordinate, manage group work, shared calendars for parents and students, embed a Google Calendar, create appointments, and incorporate Google Labs. So as you can see, there are lots of different features and the great thing about Google Calendar is that it is very much applicable for any type of education uh, purposes. So whether you're a teacher, you're a student, or you're a parent who has a, a student, there's lots of different ways that you can use it within and without and outside of the classroom. So how does it compare versus Outlook Calendar? Like I said, I actually do use Outlook Calendar for my work. It is something that the district uses. So I don't have a whole lot of say in this. In the last assignment, I was actually able to compare um, the Outlook email versus the Google email. So as far as the features of Outlook Calendar goes, it's great more for the business side of things as opposed to education. I would say it's still um, compatible with education, but not as formulated as directly as Google has it. Um, you can use it to stay organized, create events, reoccurring events or singular events. You can send in invites to other users. It's easy to use. It syncs with your Outlook email account. Um, there's a scheduling assistant that's included with it. Um, it can be public or private. You can use different types of templates, and it can be categorized. There are a lot of things and a lot of features that Outlook uses that um, go along with Google Calendar. So you're going to start seeing a lot of the same things. Now what I wanted to do was I wanted to look at the features that might be used for the classroom and something that we can, as, ten, as teachers, can benefit from. Um, so I went back and forth and I was playing with the two apps and I was using them interchangeably and seeing what I could um, see myself using better in the classroom. Anything that there's a check mark next to, I think my opinion is that there's better features for that site. So as you can see, Google Calendar here used a lot more um, features for the classroom. I put that it is good for education and the pricing is, it's actually free and Outlook Calendar. You have to have a, um, like the Microsoft accounts and it's over $100 uh, a year, I believe, um, for that feature. The only thing I did put for Outlook Calendar and support, they do have great help features, both of them do. Um, Outlook just has phone support and better email support than Gmail does. Uh, but uh, like I said, Google Calendar does have uh, great support as well. Um, they both are easy to customize. Uh, I just like the look of Google Calendar a little better. Um, the accessibility and ease of use, when I went and was playing around with the two, I could see that Google would be easier for somebody who is new or somebody who's trying to figure out. I was able to figure a lot, out a lot of those new features that I'd never been aware of just by kind of playing around with it myself. And finally, integration. Now, integration is great for both of these tools. You can integrate different apps. You can integrate different sites within your calendar. Um, I did choose Google for this one as well just because I believe that the docs, the drive, the slides, the forms, the labs, all of those kinds of things are great for the classroom, for um, collaboration with other teachers, as well as with the students and the parents. So as you can see, I do believe Google Calendar has better features, um, but you know what? I don't think you can go wrong with Outlook. If Microsoft Outlook or the Microsoft programs are something that you are familiar with, um, and especially work with the business side of things, I think Outlook, Outlook Calendar can really be a great benefit as well. So the next thing I want to show you is how to use Google Calendar. Um, bear with me a little bit. I'm going to try to kind of do what I can on here. 
um, because I'm just a little bit trying to familiarize myself with it. All right, here's what my calendar looks like through the Fort Hayes email address. Um, it, this is what you'll see when you go and type in ca Google Calendar on Google. There are several ways that you can access it. You can access it through your phone, through your email, through the app, um, and through this. If you come over here, uh, these are the apps that Google provides. There are lots of different ways, and you can see here is this calendar button. If I click on it, this is going to pop up again. So it's a great way, like I said, that integration piece where you can incorporate the different types of apps within it. If I want to create a new calendar, I can go over here. I have a couple different calendars already on here. This is just my own personal one that has my name, some birthdays that my, I might incorporate in it, and some reminders that I have down here. I have It already has the holidays and a class that I've taken previously. I can click on this plus sign. It says add other calendars, and I can um, do a couple different options. This time I just want to do a new calendar. I'm going to click on it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and type in AEP873 on here. That's this course. And I want to um, keep it at central time. That's my time zone. And I'm going to create this calendar. Now, if you let it load for a second, over on the left-hand side, you're going to see that it popped up. It has a new color. So anytime I add um, some sort of event onto my calendar, it's going to pop up red. Now I can click on it. Oh, my apologies. Um, I can go back up here. I'm going to click back out of my settings and I can see it over here with my other calendars. Now I can click on these three little buttons right here and I can change the color if I want to. I'm going to change it to yellow since it's Fort Hayes. Um, and I can click on it and have several different features. Now, if I uncheck it, those are going to go away off my calendar if I would like to organize it. Um, I can also display this one only. I can hide it from the list. Or right here, I can look at my different settings. So I'm going to show you some of the settings I have here. Um, I can have different permissions. If I want to make it public, um, let's say this is uh, public for your school, public for the community, community, anything like this, or anybody that has an FHSU email address. I can do it just for those people. Um, I have different notifications I can do down here at the bottom, or I can integrate this calendar. Lots of different choices for this. If I go over here to the left side, um, this is how I can go to those different sections if I need to do that. I can just click on them, and it goes to that section on here. Um, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to show you how you can create an event within your calendar. There's a couple ways that we can do that. First, my favorite way and the way that I think is the easiest, you just find the date on here. Um, as you can see, you can click on today. We can do next week or we can change the month. Um, week and we can change the month, the year, anything like that. So. Let's say for today, I want to say that our assignment is due this evening. I'm going to go to 9 p.m. and I'm going to click Module 7 Due. Okay, um, now I'm going to click on more options here. There's several different things that I can do. Um, I'm going to make it under the AEP 873. Um, I can add any sort of de description, add a notification if I want to remind myself. I can add a location. Um, over here, I can add my guests so they would get the same event that I have. And as well down here, I can go down and I can link anything that I want. Now, this is the part that we learned uh, where you can link something from your Google Doc, your Google Drive, anything like that. So anytime anybody accesses that, they will be able to... Um, click on that link and go right to it. So if you want to do minutes for a meeting, anything like that. I'm going to save that. And if you can see, um, it organizes it right on my calendar in here. I also have the option to hit this red plus sign down here. It takes me the exact same screen, um, but this time I'm just going to have to choose my date and my time. This is our st starting time up here. This is our ending time. If we want it to repeat, 
Um, let's say you have a designated spot for a class uh, every week. Now I have a module that's due every Sunday by 9 p.m. in this course, so I could do weekly on Sunday. I have lots of those options as well. Now um, the settings button is where we go to to change any type of setting that we need. Um, we can also go down to our help button and our help button is going to take us to any type of support that we might need for Google Calendar. I'm going to exit out of that and go and as I said you can access any Google apps that you need to. I'd like to think that um, Google Calendar is very easy to use and I would recommend it to anyone. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful evening.